Good morning, Broncos fans. You are watching Legends of Mile High, a podcast where we talk about history and current events. And I'm your host, Thomas Hall. And today we have a topic about history. We're going to jump in to whether or not Riley Odoms, a forgotten about great tight end, is worthy of the Hall of Fame. That uh, discussion is going to be a good one because he has the merits. But before I jump into that, I just want to say I didn't realize until this morning that today is Randy Gratishar's birthday. Now, if there's anyone that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, it's that man. He is the biggest snub for the Hall of Fame of anybody left who still needs to get into the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Once they got Jerry Kramer in, I think Randy Gratishar came to the very tippy top of that snub list. And unfortunately, you know, this last season, he was the last voting cycle he was supposed to be in. Everybody thought he, it was his year, but uh, somehow Joe Klecko snuck in on, in a big surprise. So hopefully we'll knock on wood that this year, when the senior pool voters come together, they see it in their heart of hearts to finally rectify that issue and put Randy Gratishar in the Hall of Fame. So happy birthday to Randy Gratishar. And let's hope that he gets into the Hall of Fame. Now let's talk about another Bronco, obviously. Another Bronco that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. We're going to talk about Riley Odoms. Now most people don't even don't even think of Riley Odoms anymore. He's he's one of those players who have has been forgotten about. They people just don't understand how great of a player Riley Odoms was for his position and for his time. I mean now today, I mean tight ends are superstars on the field. They're most of them are wide receivers in a bigger body type of thing. So he uh you know you look at the career stats from back in the day and it, does, it they pale in comparison to today's tight ends but tight ends were different in the 70s than they are today tight ends were just an extra blocker for the most part and only a few were able to catch the ball at a significant rate and those were the good athletes and there's only a few of them and Riley Odoms is one of them that comes to the top now, before we get into his merits, I'd just like to say, please like the show, subscribe to Mile High Huddle YouTube so that you can get these alerts. I know it's early in the morning and, uh, you know, eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning mountain time. It's uh, it's not an easy time to get up and watch this live. But the nice thing about watching it live is you can jump into the discussion. You can have your opinions heard. And we've got one right here, Michael Ronquillo coming in with Facebook stars. Man, I think thank you so much for the support. You're you're an incredible mile high and Broncos guy, man. It, it's nice to see you here. And I, it was a great picture of that uh, Greg Dulcich um, jersey that you had on. So thanks for sharing that. So Michael says, good morning, Thomas Hall and Legends of Mile High. Go Broncos and Buckham. And we got Clayton here on coming in as well from Facebook saying, Morning, Broncos country. Well, good morning to you, Clayton. I'm glad to see you here. And uh, he also says to sh smash that like button and share, guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I mean, it's great to have the support. And if you're here live, you can support the show and keep uh, keep the legends of our great franchise alive. Because there's been some great ones in the past. And uh, we've talked about two of them already. We just, you know, Grandy Gratishar and Riley Odoms. But there's so many more going way back that people don't even think about from the first season that the Broncos were in existence. There was some great players, Goose Gonsolin, Lionel Taylor. And then you've got, you know, the, the one guy that should, had he not hurt, gotten hurt, he'd be in the hall of fame, rich tombstone Jackson. He was on his way three straight, all pro first team, all pros on his way to his fourth gets injured. And that was pretty much the end of his career. Unfortunately, heck of a player. So thank you for jumping in here. I appreciate it. So let's talk a little bit about Riley Odoms. Riley Odoms tight end. It started his career in the early 70s. Back when, like I said, tight ends were basically an extra lineman for the most part. But 
they did catch passes and there's some great ones. I mean, there's, you got Mike Ditka, who's in the hall of fame. He's one of those that were a great, you know, was a great pass catcher along with blocker. You got Jackie Smith, Pete Ratzlaff. And those are, those are some Pete's I don't, isn't in the hall of fame, but Jackie Smith is in the hall of fame. I mean, these are some great, great tight ends. Riley Odoms was right up there with them. In fact, Riley Odoms was, um, he only there's only through those three tight ends that had more yards than he did in in uh, reception uh, receiving yards. That's elite company back then. You have to think about you can't think about the tight ends of today. You've got to think about the tight ends of yesterday. What were they doing? Odoms was one of the top five easy back then. Top five easy, and um, he's also was fifth in receptions. And he had more touchdowns. And when you talk about creating wins, it's it's getting touchdowns. He had more touchdowns than Jackie Smith. And he's in the Hall of Fame. So those are some in incredible numbers that just people don't even think about anymore because it's been so long since anyone has seen or heard or talked about or watched Riley, Riley Odoms play. Now, Riley Odoms isn't just you know, a career stats guy. He wasn't in the league an incredible long time. So he didn't have a long, you know, longevity to keep those career stats coming. He, he, he was in the NFL for the adequate amount of time to, to get the career stats, but not just not hung on and to get, you know, kind of pad his stats. But furthermore, he was still great in the seasons that he played, right? So you don't have to look at the career stats to see how good Riley Odoms was. So in 1973, he led all tight ends with seven touchdowns, right? And he almost uh, d he had that same feat again in the next year where he was second. So, I mean, he's up there in tight ends, uh, tight ends, uh, single season touchdowns. So that means he, you know, he was good during the season. In 78, he led the league in receptions. Uh, well, actually second, sorry, second behind Hall of Famer Dave Casper. So he had all these seasons where he was at the top or close to the top of the NFL. So you can't just say, oh, he padded his stats. He was actually one of the best tight ends when he played the game. And he was also one, a key in getting the Broncos to the Super Bowl in 77. Now, the Broncos struggled to get into the playoffs. And at the time, it was the Steelers, you know, the vaunted Steelers that were going to the Super Bowl and winning them. And the Broncos had to get through the Steelers in order to get to the Super Bowl. And Riley Odom's game in the playoffs was one of the reasons that put them put them over the top. And his stats in that game, I mean, for a tight end back then, wasn't incredible. I mean, if you look at it now, it's like, whoa, that's not incredible. He had five receptions for 43 yards and a touchdown. But that's what it took to beat the Steelers back then, right? You had to have these players step up and do something to create those wins. And that was Riley Odom. So, not only did he have, you know, those sing, you know, single season stats and career stats, he also was instrumental in getting that team to the Super Bowl. And I'm, I'm sorry, getting the Super Bowl is tough. They lost that Super Bowl because the offense turned it over. Well, the offense, I should say, uh, Craig Morton turned it over eight times, pretty much. So uh, that was a loss in the Super Bowl. It was a Super Bowl they should have won. Albert Knoppers coming in, saying good morning, Thomas, and all listening. So good morning to you, Albert. Thank you for coming in from Facebook. Appreciate you being here. It's always great to see you. So thank you so much. Thank you for all the support you've given me over this. Uh, gosh, it's going to be a year pretty soon that I've been doing the show. So uh, thank you very much. We're we're on to our almost our. Uh, we're going to be at fifty episodes pretty soon. So thank you for that. So Riley Odom. Back to Riley Odom's, of course. Now I, I don't know if people on here ha got a chance to watch Riley Odom's play, but he was he was actually you know, really. Uh, an effortless kind of receiver, so to speak for his size. Like he, you know, he kind of, uh, he's one of those, one of those players, one of those tight end players who, you know, just kind of was effortlessly caught, effortlessly caught the ball was really good in space could, and then could also run you over. So you had the size. And so he, you know, he, that's his, you know, he was uh, a joy to watch really. When you go back and look at those old, old games, just watch him play. He was uh, smooth you know, and in probably was out of his uh, out of his time, right? If you put someone like him in the NFL today, 
you would see people like, you know, Rob Gronkowski, who could catch the ball really well, engulf the ball like he did, but still block and uh, and make those, uh, you know, the touchdowns and the yards and, and really be a key weapon in the NFL. And that's what Riley Odoms was, but a little bit ahead of his time because they weren't utilizing tight ends as much. But the last piece that I really think puts Odoms over the top, <clears throat> and that's if you look at another tight end who who's their careers overlap. In fact, uh, it, he um, Charlie Sanders came in in the late '60s and kind of overlapped Riley Odoms from '72 to '77. And Charlie Sanders got in the Hall of Fame in 2007. So one would think that, oh man, Charlie Sanders is in the Hall of Fame. And th this is, uh, Michael Harrison um, pointed this out to me on Twitter. He he was thinking, uh, a guy that I follow on Twitter is thinking, hey, Riley Little is coming next. So I dug into all the stats, right? In the career stats, Riley Odoms beats Charlie Sanders. No problem. But also when they played during the time together, and this is when, you know, Odoms was, fresh into the league and Charlie Sanders was in his prime only one season did Charlie Sanders have a better season than Riley Odoms so if you look at it from a pure stats perspective Odoms was the better player much better in fact he was better than him better than Sanders when they played if you look at the stats in the season only one time did Charlie Sanders best him now Charlie Sanders played for the Detroit Lions um you know, not a friend. Well, a franchise that uh, has struggled since the fifties for sure to, uh, to get wins, but Sanders, another key piece is Sanders only went to the playoffs one time. Now, a lot of players are judged on their success in the postseason, And that's why Terrell Davis is in the hall of fame short career, but was the best running back in postseason history. He's in the hall of fame because of it. Incredible back, just a lot, you know, Due to injury, he wasn't able to get those career stats. Charlie Sanders only won one game. Riley Odoms played in several playoff games and was a key in those playoff games, getting them to the Super Bowl. So if you're going to compare tight ends of the same era who are in the Hall of Fame, you got to look at Charlie Sanders and you got to look at Riley Odoms and you got to compare them side to side. And there's no way anyone could come to the conclusion based on factual information. I'm not talking about opinion here, watching them play and saying, oh, yeah, Charlie Sanders is a better athlete or whatever. It doesn't matter. When you look at the production on the field, the factual information, Riley Odoms had a better career than Charlie Sanders. He should be in the Hall of Fame for that fact alone. But for some reason, nobody even thinks about Riley Odoms anymore. It's they, – they don't even – he doesn't even come up in conversation – unless someone like me brings it up. And that's interesting. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that he's not in the uh, Broncos ring of fame yet. And it's a bit of an oversight in my mind, again, kind of overlooked, not really thought about as a player from then, you know, he went about his business uh, the right way, you know, and, but just kind of overlooked. I don't know why there's, there's a bunch of people that are overlooked the, you know, especially in, in Broncos country. And it, it was a long time ago, but the good news is uh, my friend Ron from fan of the year told me that he has some, uh, he thinks that he's going to get in in 2023 Broncos ring of fame, which will be an injustice that has gone on a little too long. And uh, hopefully that's, hopefully that's true. I, I believe him. He's, he's in the know in a lot of uh, those uh, circles when it comes to older players. So I hope that that, is the case. I hope he gets into the ring of fame. And then hopefully when that happens, some more buzz can be talked about, you know, more buzz can, uh, can be generated about Riley Odoms because he really does deserve to be in the hall of fame. And I wrote an article about him on my countdown of the top 15 players uh, from Bro the Broncos franchise or not players top Broncos because there's coaches in there as well. And he was, he came in at number 12 right on my uh, countdown but when i look back at it i think he should be higher i uh, the more i think about it i'm like man there's some great ones that uh, should be in the hall of fame and and odoms maybe when when i go back and i i review that i think that maybe he should be a little bit higher 
on my list because he is definitely worthy of the Hall of Fame. So, I mean, I'm not going to jump on the Riley Odoms, get him into the Hall of Fame bandwagon yet and try and promote him because we still got to get Randy Gratishar in the Hall of Fame. There's a bunch of Broncos senior candidates that are have been waiting. And unfortunately, I mean, we just I, I was watching on Twitter and uh, the New York voter Hall of Fame voters is talking up. Someone like Carl Banks, and I like Carl Banks. Don't get me wrong. Carl Banks is a heck of a player, but as we saw with Joe Klecko kind of getting in as a surprise, now we're going to have to watch Carl Banks get pushed into the Hall of Fame in front of several other candidates like Elsie Greenwood and uh, Randy Radishar. I mean, this is crazy to start talking about some of these other players who, you know, should could be in the Hall of Fame, but why – why uh, why pass over some people that have been waiting so long and who are more deserving? It's beyond me. So we'll see what happens. I hope, I really hope that it's not another Joe Klecko situation. I like Joe Klecko. I think he had some merit to get in the Hall of Fame, but over Randy Gratishar was a bit of a surprise and uh, over some other players. But, I mean, there's some – we've had a long list of just Broncos players who are in the senior pool who probably will never get in, and some of them who will be, you know, may – may not even be with us anymore uh, before they get in. So it's it's a real shame that uh, we see certain uh, agendas happen in the voters instead of just looking at their merits. And that that's where I come back to Riley Odoms versus Charlie Sanders. I mean, if you're going to look at their merits, why is Ray, Riley Odoms not even close to getting in the Hall of Fame and Charlie Sanders is in? And if somebody has an argument for Charlie Sanders that I'm missing, please let me know. But uh, – in my mind, uh, there isn't. So, so who are some of the other Broncos who deserve in the uh, senior pool Broncos who deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? I mean, I can go down the list. Goose Gonsolin, I talked about him. He was the uh, he set the interception uh, career interception record in the American Football League. It was finally broken, but he set it in just a short amount of time before he left and and played one season with the 49ers and then retired. He's one that you never hear talk about, but it's somebody that you have to bring into discussion. I mean, he was, he was the best at what he did back there, regardless of whether or not, you know, it's the AFL versus the NFL discussion. He should be in, you know, he should be uh, he talked about for the Hall of Fame. And then you got Lionel Taylor. If, you know, look at his career reception stats. First guy to 100 yards. I mean, he should be in the Hall of Fame as well. He's in the senior pool, forgotten about. Riley Owens is another one I talk about. We got Dennis Smith. We got Carl Mecklenburg is in the senior pool now. He's been there for a couple of years. I mean, these are players that are we're completely forgetting about. And then we're, you know, greats. And we're talking about, you know, other players players from different teams that are borderline in my mind. So it's, it's a, it's a bit interesting uh, to, to watch how it works. And hopefully as more, more people come into the voters uh, realm, more people get, uh, you know, some of the old schoolers come out come out and the new, new voters come in, they have a little bit more of an open mind. And I hope that that happens. So, and I, I've got people, you know, somebody from Facebook, Facebook user just saying like, there's 30 players need to be in the, the Hall of Fame, and he says hello to her. He says hello, Thomas Go Broncos Hall of Fame is blind, and that's you know you can say that. I, I don't. I mean, it's a hard job. Don't get me wrong to to put these players in, uh, but I think I know you can't really complain about the Broncos of of late. But Broncos were passed over a long time ago, which made a senior pool pool glut, so to speak, of Broncos players, and that. You know, hopefully they can rectify that. They're making changes to do that, but there's, you're right. There's just so many players. I, there's th at least 30 players just in the senior pool, you know, at least that should be in the Hall of Fame, probably more. So that's a, that's a long wait when you, especially when you're doing one at a time and now you got three, you know, three years of three at a time. So it's still a long wait. Hopefully, hopefully that, that, uh, you know, that changes and there should have been the centennial class that changed it, but it didn't happen. So anyway, that's my spiel on Riley Odoms. I think he's a Hall of Famer. 
And, you know, at some point we need to start talking about Riley Odoms and get, get some buzz going. But I think we should wait at least until Randy Gratishar gets in the hall of fame. And then fans of the Broncos fans can come together and start talking about players like Riley Odoms and, and push. And you saw the push with um, Ken Riley. He's in the, he's going to be in the hall of fame and the Bengals fans did a great job talking about Ken Riley. And here he is, he's finally going to be in the hall of fame, whether he you know was a better player than his counterpart uh, Parrish or not. It doesn't matter. He's going to be in and, and the Bengals fans were a big proponent of that. So I urge you, if you have a hall of famer that you think should be in to start talking about it and you can, and you can, uh, you know, tweet me at Thomas Hall NFL. We'll talk about, the merits and I'll be more than happy to talk about the merits with you of any uh, Broncos players you think is deserving. So thank you all for joining. I appreciate you coming in this morning. I know that uh, it's a kind of a dead news time, but uh, I hope you enjoyed talking about Riley Odoms and let's uh, make sure that we start talking a little bit more and uh, Michael Ronquillo coming in. Great story on Riley Odoms. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you for the support. Please support the show. Please um, make sure that you uh, hit the like button and share with your friends. And Dan Hall, fellow Hall, coming in. Thank you. Good morning, Thomas, he says. I wanted to ask you about a game when Dan Reeves alternated QBs for an entire game. Do you remember that game? Maybe a future topic for Legends of Mile High. Yeah, maybe it is. And I do remember that game with Sean Moore and Tommy Maddox. And uh, I have actually have uh, Sean Moore's rookie card. Uh, that's funny. I, cause I talk about, you know, one of the, one of the guys that, uh, you know, I thought, oh man, this guy's going to be a really good player, but ended up not being it. Yeah. That was, that was a rotation between Tommy Maddox who got, I mean, absolutely got Dan Reeves fired. I mean, Dan Reeves made the decision to try, try and bring in Tommy Maddox as a number one draft choice and was going to try and shop John Elway and Pat Bullen wasn't having anything to do with it. And John Elway had been, was injured. And so he, did that platoon where they you rotated play versus play with Sean Moore and Tommy Maddox. It didn't work very well. Uh, I think, uh, I think that tactic is, is a strange tactic. Uh, I don't know why, why coaches try it. You got to get somebody in a groove, you know, a quarterback to, to kind of get all of those uh, reps to kind of build your, your timing confidence in the game. I don't know. It didn't work out. And I don't think he ever tried it again. I never, I don't remember him ever trying again, but yeah, Sean Moore and Tommy Maddox rotating at uh, quarterback. That was, I don't know. I think it was 92. I don't remember the exact year. It was, it was the early nineties. It was a year or so before uh, Dan Reeves was let go, but yeah, injury, to John Elway, Sean Moore, Tommy Maddox rotating. He should have just let, if he thought Tommy Maddox was going to be the number one guy, he should have just threw him out there and let him, sink or swim, but oh, well, uh, and that, uh, brought in, uh, you know, eventually got to Mike Shanahan and two Super Bowl championships, nothing against Dan Reeves. So I think he's a hall of famer. I think he's a hall of fame coach, a heck of a leader. He, he came from that Jim Lee Howell tree learned under, uh, Tom Landry went to nine Super Bowls as a player and a coach and an assistant coach winning a couple. So it's, uh, and he was, he, he was also in, instrumental as a running back in the, in the Cowboys, uh, days when, when, uh, I think it was Tony Dorsett got injured and, and I think it was, I'm not, I don't know my Cowboys history that much, but he came in and, and was a solid running back for them, uh, to, uh, help them, help them, uh, get some wins in, in, in the playoffs and everything. So thank you, Dan, for that. I appreciate it. So with that, I'm going to say, uh, goodbye and thank you very much for joining and have a great day, Broncos fans.